Hello and welcome to the Friday, December 15th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Holidays are around the corner and with that many of us uh, will spend time with family which means that you'll probably be asked for advice on how to keep systems secure. We have published guides like this in the past ourselves. Uh, this year I do want to point to the Citizen Lab Security Planner. It's a fairly simple tool securityplanner.org that targets non technical users and attempts uh, to uh, customize security advice for these users. Pretty straightforward site to use, so it's probably something that you would like to point family to. After you answer a couple of pretty simple questions as to what device you use and what your concerns are, it will put together a list of items that you should address, like for example, two-factor passwords or backups, and then it offers some guides to assist you in how to accomplish this. Pretty comprehensive site and like I said, great to help out family without having to spend a lot of time actually making all these adjustments yourself. And Apple released another minor update for TV, OS and iOS. The main point of this update is that in the update released a week ago, Apple did remove the ability to share access to your HomeKit devices. A problem was found that allowed people to bypass authentication for HomeKit. So as a quick fix, Apple did disable this sharing functionality, which is now being brought back in this latest update. There's also an update for iCloud for Windows 7. Now this update does fix five security vulnerabilities in WebKit as well as a sixth vulnerability in the APNs server. Now storing credentials on a client system is always a tricky undertaking and the latest company to run into issues with that is Fortinet in its 40 client pro product. This product allows you to set up a VPN and of course it does need to know VPN credentials in order to allow you to connect to your VPN server. These VPN credentials can be stored on the client. Now they are encrypted. However, they're always encrypted with the same key and this key is actually present within the client. So if an attacker is extracting this key from the client software and the attacker can do this from any installation of this client software and then gets a hold of the encrypted key, for example, from a backup or the like, then the attacker is able to actually decrypt these credentials. And security company Fox IT has an interesting write-up how they became the victim of a man-in-the-middle attack. It all started by having Fox IT's domain hijacked. Now, this is the part where the report is still somewhat fuzzy. They haven't really figured out how someone obtained credentials in order to change DNS information with the registra. Could have been actually that this happened on the registrar side, but they really leave it open. They don't know how the attacker got access to that information. The attacker then used this access to redirect the Fox IT domain, establish a man in the middle position, and with that intercept traffic that was going to the Fox IT customer portal, to help with that, the attacker also obtained a TLS certificate for the Fox IT domain. Fox IT was pretty quick in discovering the attack. After about 10 hours, they were able to mitigate this problem. But for these 10 hours, the attacker was able to intercept customer traffic. And of course, that hacker may have intercepted any traffic being sent by Fox IT customers to the Fox IT customer portal. This attack really shows how important it is that you monitor your domains and make sure that you are alerted if unauthorized changes are made to your domains. 
Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. I will be giving a talk here on Saturday evening in DC. The talk will be about some of the recent crypto coin theft that we have seen. If you are interested and if you are not attending the conference, then please send me a quick email so I can have a batch ready for you to attend. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.